Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today we are going to take a first look at the brand new approvals app in Microsoft Teams. When would you ever use an approvals app? Well, maybe you have a new cookie recipe and you need the president of your cookie company to sign off on all new recipes. You can use the approvals app for that. First off, we're going to look at how you can both request and grant approval from directly within the app. Then we'll look at how you can do it from a chat or a channel. And lastly, we'll also look at how you can do it outside of the context of Microsoft Teams. Let's say, for example, from SharePoint. All right, well, why don't we jump on the PC and let's check this out. Here I am in Microsoft Teams. And first off, I wanna show you how you can get the approvals app. And there are two different ways you can get to it. Down in the bottom left-hand corner, we can click on the apps icon. Once this opens up, this shows you all of the different apps that you can add to Microsoft Teams. Up in the top left-hand corner, you can search for apps. Let's type in approvals. Up here in the top left-hand corner, we see a result for the new approvals app. You can click on it here. Alternatively, we you can also click on the ellipsis over on the navigation bar on the left hand side and here too you can also search for approvals and then you could click on it here let's click on approvals this opens up the approvals app if this is something that is going to be part of your daily workflow you can also pin the approvals app so you have easy access to it over on the left hand side you'll now see an icon for approvals if you right click on it you can pin this app to your navigation bar now that we're in the approvals app, let's take a moment to orient ourselves to the experience. Over on the left-hand side, we see two separate categories. The first one is received, and here I can see all of the approval requests of me. So basically, people want me to approve things. And over here on the right-hand side, I'll see a list of all of those requests. Over on the left-hand side, I can also see all of the approval requests that I've sent to others. So basically, I want someone else to approve something for me. Up above, there's a hamburger icon, and when I click on this, it hides all of those different categories, and when I click on it again, it'll show all of the categories. Over on the right-hand side in this table, I can see some high-level details of my request. Here I can see the title, I also see the current status, when it was created, who requested it, and also who it was sent to. Now you'll see within the status column, some of these are closed, some of these need additional information, and some of them are still pending. Up above in the top right-hand corner, I can apply a filter. If let's say I only wanna see the requested status, I can click on that to filter down my list. Now that I filtered my list, if I wanna see any additional details related to this request, I could simply double click on this and this will show me the details and any attachments associated with this request. Well, that's a high level overview of the approvals interface, but I need to get some work done. I've been working on a new cookie recipe and I want our president to sign off on it. So I figured I could just try out the new approvals app to see if that'll move things along a little quicker. Up in the top right hand corner, I can kick off a new approval request. Let's click on that. This opens up a create new approval request dialog and here I need to fill in all of the details of my request. Here at the top, I need to type in a name and I want it to be easy to understand. So when Patty, our president, sees it within her list, she quickly knows what it is. So I came up with a new cookie, so I'll just be straightforward. New cookie, Sriracha Mint. Next, I need to enter in the approver. And like I said before, I need our president to sign off on it. So I'll type in Patty Fernandez and hopefully she gives me the go ahead. Now I've just entered one name so far, but I could also enter other names. Let's say I wanted to put the director of our company in. I could type in Nestor. I now have two different approvers, and once I enter at least two names in, this toggle allows me to select whether I just want a response from one of the approvers or from all of the approvers. Now in this case, I only need Patty to sign off on it, so I'll remove Nestor for now. Down below, I can also type in additional details. Now, knowing Patty, she'll probably just look at the title here and then decide whether or not to go ahead just based on this, but I might as well enter some additional details just in case she wants to read more about it. As I scroll down the dialogue, I can also add an attachment to this approval request. And Patty tends to be more of a visual person, so I think attaching a photo of what these cookies look like will really help make the case. I'll click on Add Attachment, and I 
can upload a file from my computer. When I click on this, this opens up my file picker, and here you can see those delicious looking sriracha mint cookies. Let me select this photo, and then I'll click on open. Down below, there's one last question that we need to fill out before we could finalize our approval request, and that's whether we want to use custom responses. By default, if we leave this turned off, Patty will be able to approve the request, which I think she's probably likely to do, or she'll be able to reject it. Now, let's say that we wanna give her the opportunity to use other responses. Here, we could toggle this on, and we could say, yes, this is a fantastic idea, or we could have another custom response that simply says no. Now, right here, you're limited to two custom responses. If you use Power Automate, you can add even more custom responses, but we have to do that outside of Teams. Later on in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can do that. For now, I simply wanna use the default set, so I'll toggle this off, and let's go ahead now and send our approval request. I can now see in my sent list that I have a new request of Patty. If I wanna review the details of my request, I could simply click on this, and here, once again, I see all of the details. If, for whatever reason, I wanted to cancel it, I could click on Cancel Request down here. Now, if I look at the current status, it looks like it's pending with Patty, so I'm really eager to see what she thinks of this new amazing recipe. I'm now in Patty's account and she has a whole bunch of requests awaiting her approval. There are a few different ways that she can stay up to date on what needs her attention. Over on the left hand side on the navigation bar, let's click into activity. The approvals app writes to the activity feed and here you see my request for the new Sriracha Mint cookie. Patty can also go back to the navigation bar and click into the approvals app and here too she also sees the approval request and by default it pops it up to get her attention so she can look at this request right away. Sriracha mint cookies? Oh, that sounds awful. I should just reject that right away. Oh, here's a picture. I guess I could take a quick look. Hmm, eh, these actually look pretty tasty. I, I'd probably at least give this a try. I mean, we do have a culture of experimentation here at the KCC. All right, I, I'll leave some comments here. Uh, the picture sold it. Keep going. All right, let's approve this. Here back within my interface, I can see my sent list, and here I can see that Patty reviewed the request, and it looks like she approved this new cookie. When I click into the request, here I can see that she just approved it just now, and down below, it looks like she said the picture sold it. It's a good thing I know how Patty works. Once again, she's a very visual person. To create a new approval request, I don't have to go through the approvals app. I could also create one directly through either a chat or from within a channel. Here I am in a channel, we set up a new channel for approvals. Here I could kick off a new conversation and I now see an icon on the bottom here for approvals. When I click on this, you'll probably notice this dialogue. It's the same one as what we saw before. I'm quickly going to create an approval request. We've recently created a new employee benefit handbook and I also want to get Patty to sign off on this. I filled in all the details and I'm ready to go. So let's now click on send. Here now you see the new approval request show up in the conversation view of the channel. And here you have all all of the details associated with this request. Back within Patty's view, she's now in the approvals general channel and she can see the request. Now she took a moment to review this new benefits handbook and she doesn't agree with a lot of the benefits. So she's gonna click on view details and just like before she could either reject or approve and she's gonna have to reject this one. Back now within my view, I can see that Patty has rejected the new employee benefit handbook. I'll have to set up some time with her to understand what she didn't like about it. So far, we've been creating all of our approval requests directly in the context of Microsoft Teams. However, you can also connect many other apps and services directly to the approval workflow. And today, I wanna to connect SharePoint to the approval workflow. Here I am on a SharePoint site for the Kevin Cookie Company marketing team, and we have a list of a whole bunch of fantastic marketing ideas. Now, ideally, anytime a team member comes in here and they click on new to add a new idea, I want this to kick off an approval workflow. To pull this off, we are going to use Power Automate. To access Power Automate on office.com, over on the left-hand side at the very bottom, there's an icon for all apps. Let's click on that. This will show all the different apps that you have access to. Let's click on the one that says Power Automate. This opens up Power Automate. If you've never used Power Automate before, it allows you to automate business processes by connecting different apps and services. 
is. To be able to create our flow over on the left hand side, let's click on the icon that says create. This drops us on the create screen and there are many different types of flows that we can create. We wanna create an automated cloud flow today. Basically, when someone adds a new item to SharePoint, Power Automate will detect that and then it'll kick off the approval flow. Let's click on this first icon. This opens up a prompt where I can build my automated cloud flow. First, I need to give it a name and I'll call this marketing idea needs approval. Down below, I can also choose the flows trigger. Basically, when this action happens, this will kick off the flow. Now, once again, when someone adds an item to SharePoint, I want it to kick off, so I'll select this item. However, you can see that you can connect all sorts of different apps and services to kick off your flow. For now, let's choose when an item is created and then click on create. Next, I need to enter some details related to the SharePoint site. Up above, I could type in the site address and I'll type in the site address for our marketing team. Once I type that in, I could also select the list name. When I click on this, we have two different lists associated with this SharePoint site and I wanna use the marketing ideas list. I'll select that one. Next, let's click on new step. Next, I need to choose an action that happens when a new SharePoint item is added. Down below, I can search for different connectors. To be able to leverage the approval workflow, let's simply type in approvals and here I'll see the approval approvals app. When I click on this, I'll see all the different actions that I can take. Now I want to start and wait for an approval, so I'll click on this option. Here I could enter in the approval type. When I click on this drop down menu, I can set it to the default of simply approve and reject, or here I can select custom responses. If you remember earlier in the dialogue, we can only enter up to two custom responses. By using Power Automate, we can enter as many as we want. Here I wanna enter in some custom responses and I want at least one response. Patty is on point for approving, so just one person is sufficient. I started off by typing in three different custom responses. Patty when she gets one of these requests, she could either say yes, no, or I need more information. Here I could go in and I could add more options if I want. However, I'm satisfied with these three. Down below, I can enter in the details of the approval request. Starting with the title, here I'm going to type in marketing idea needs approval. I'll enter a colon and then over on the right hand side, I see different dynamic content that I can include as part of the title. I wanna include the title or this is also the idea. I'll select that so the marketing idea shows up here. Next, I need to indicate who I want to assign it to. I'm going to assign this to Patty, our president, and I could add other details, but for now, all of this looks good and I'll click on save. This is outside of the scope of today's tutorial, but I did want to give a little taste of what you could do with Power Automate. Depending on the response that Patty chooses, you can have Power Automate take different actions. For example, let's say that Patty says yes, you could have Power Automate kick off an email that says, please proceed with this marketing idea. Or maybe Patty says, I need more information you can have Power Automate automatically send a message to the requester saying, please provide more information before I can approve. So it's extremely powerful what you could do here. For now though, we're going to move forward with this. Now that I've finished creating my flow, if I wanna see all of my different flows, over on the left-hand side, I can click on My Flows, and here I see my new flow called Marketing Idea Needs Approval. Let's test this out now to see how it works. I'm back on the SharePoint site, and let me click to add a new idea. Now, I'm pretty bullish on baking the world's largest cookie. I think if we bake the world's largest cookie, we'll probably get a lot of press coverage and this will drive a lot of interest in the Kevin Cookie Company. Now, I'm really confident about this idea, so I'm gonna put down a 10 and let's save this and see if Patty is on board. I'm now back in Patty's view and here you see a new approval request based on me adding an item in SharePoint. When Patty clicks on this, she can view all of the approval request details. And one of the really neat things down here at the very bottom, we see all of the custom options. She can choose yes, no, or I need more information. And we all know baking the world's largest cookie, this is as close as you can get to a slam dunk. So we're gonna go with yes and submit. All right, if you now know how to use approvals in Teams, please give this video a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Lastly, if you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, feel free to leave a comment down below. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I hope to see you next time. Bye.